Welcome to day 76 of our Bible reading plan. Today we're reading Leviticus chapter 9, Leviticus chapter 10, Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to verse 32, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 to 49, and Psalms chapter 76. We're reading from the Berean Standard Bible, Leviticus chapter 9. On the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, Take for yourself a young bull for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering, both without blemish, and present them before the Lord. Then speak to the Israelites and say, Take a male goat for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, both a year old and without blemish for a burnt offering, an ox and a ram, for a peace offering to sacrifice before the Lord, and a grain offering mixed with oil. For today the Lord will appear to you. So they took what Moses had commanded to the front of the tent of meeting, and the whole congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Approach the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering to make atonement for yourself and for the people, and sacrifice the people's offering to make atonement for them as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron approached the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. The sons of Aaron brought the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and applied it to the horns of the altar, and he poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. On the altar he burned the fat, the kidneys, and the lobe of the liver from the sin offering, as the Lord had commanded Moses. But he burned up the flesh and the hide outside the camp. Then Aaron slaughtered the burnt offering. His sons brought him the blood, and he sprinkled it on all sides of the altar. They brought him the burnt offering piece by piece, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. He washed the entrails and the legs and burned them atop the burnt offering on the altar. Aaron then presented the people's offering. He took the male goat for the people's sin offering, slaughtered it, and offered it for sin like the first one. He presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the ordinance. Next, he presented the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar in addition to the morning's burnt offering. Then he slaughtered the hawks and the ram as the people's peace offering. His sons brought him the blood and he sprinkled it on all sides of the altar. They also brought the fat portions from the ox and the ram, the fat tail, the fat covering the entrails, the kidneys, and the lobe of the liver, and placed them on the breast. Aaron burned the fat portions on the altar. But he waved the breast and the right thigh as a wave offering before the Lord, as Moses had commanded. Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. And having made the sin offering, the burnt offering and the peace offering, he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then entered the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. Leviticus chapter 10 is our next reading. Now Aaron's sons Nadab and Abihu took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense and offered on authorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died in the presence of the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord meant when he said, To those who come near me, I will show my holiness, and in the sight of all the people, I will reveal my glory. But Aaron remained silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel, and said to them, Come here, carry the bodies of your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came forward and carried them still in their tunics outside the camp, as Moses had directed. 
Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, do not let your hair become disheveled, and do not tear your garments, or else you will die. And the Lord will be angry with the whole congregation. But your brothers, the whole house of Israel, may mourn on account of the fire that the Lord has ignited. You shall not go outside the entrance to the tent of meeting, or you will die, for the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they did as Moses instructed. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons are not to drink wine or strong drink when you enter the tent of meeting, or else you will die. This is a permanent statute for the generations to come. You must distinguish between the holy and the common, between the clean and the unclean, so that you may teach the Israelites all the statutes that the Lord has given them through Moses. And Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Hithamah, take the grain offering that remains from the offerings made by fire to the Lord, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, because it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your share and your son's share of the offerings made by fire to the Lord, for this is what I have been commanded. And you and your sons and daughters may eat the breast of the wave offering and the tie of the contribution in a ceremonially clean place, because these portions have been assigned to you and your children from the peace offerings of the sons of Israel. They are to bring the tie of the contribution and the breast of the wave offering together with the fat portions of the offerings made by fire, to wave as a wave offering before the Lord. It will belong permanently to you and your children, as the Lord has commanded. Later, Moses searched carefully for the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it had been burned up. He was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, and asked, Why didn't you hit the sin offering in the holy place? For it is most holy, it was given to you to take away the guilt of the congregation by making atonement for them before the Lord. Since his blood was not brought inside the holy place, you should have hidden it in the sanctuary area, as I commanded. But Aaron replied to Moses, Behold, this very day, they presented their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. Since these things have happened to me, if I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been acceptable in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard this explanation, he was satisfied. Now we're going to read Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to verse 32. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were filled with horror and ran to greet him. What are you disputing with them? He asked. Someone in the crowd replied, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a spirit that makes him mute. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive it out, but they were unable. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long must I remain with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him, and seeing Jesus, the spirit immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has this been with him? From childhood, he said, it often throws him into the fire or into the water, trying to kill him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you can, echoed Jesus, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father cried out, I do believe, help my own belief. When Jesus saw that a crowd had come running, he rebuked the unclean spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you to come out and never enter him again. After shrieking and convulsing him violently, the spirit came out. The boy became like a corpse, so that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. 
after Jesus had gone into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus answered, this kind cannot come out except by prayer. Going on from there, they passed through Galilee, but Jesus did not want anyone to know because he was teaching his disciples. He told them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand this statement, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Now we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 to verse 49. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? You fool. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has designed, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is of one degree, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is of another the sun has one degree of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual, however, was not first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly man, so also are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the likeness of the heavenly man, so also shall we bear the likeness of the heavenly man. Now we're going to read Psalms chapter 76, which is our last reading for today. God is known in Judah. His name is great in Israel. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he shattered the flaming arrows, the shield and sword and weapons of war, Selah. You are resplendent with light, more majestic than mountains filled with game. The valiant lie plundered. They sleep their last sleep. No man of might could lift a hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and rider lie stunned. You alone are to be feared. When you are hungry, who can stand before you? From heaven you pronounce judgment, and the earth feared and was still. When God rose up to judge, to save all the lowly of the earth. Selah. Even the wrath of man shall praise you. With the survivors of wrath, you will clothe yourself. Make and fulfill your vows to the Lord your God. Let all the neighboring lands bring tribute to him who is to be feared. He breaks the spirits of princes. He is feared by the kings of the earth. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word.